Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki, and I'm here with Zenrod. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? It's here to talk about Kuroko's basketball <laughs> after so long. Yeah. Finally. I promised and I delivered. I even slammed my desk. There was about a 50% chance that thing was about to fall apart, <laughs> and I still slammed it. Uh, it is a series in which we talk about all Shonen Jump anime. Uh, today we're talking about Kuroko's Basketball. And the other off times we talk about Gintama and uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. And because uh, I just realized we recorded this after Gintama. So we'll Im- uh, insert production issues of <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen here. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. Yeah, we'll, we'll I see. I wonder if they actually walked out. Did you see that one tweet where they were like, it, it's done, the production desk left. I sh- I hope to God they walked out. I I hope to God they fucking walked it's out. A, it's a translated Japanese tweet, so I don't know how you don't know reliable because it's it's a Twitter translated tweet yeah. in Japanese, so I I don't know how reliable that is. That's very but hard. it literally says the production desk has abandoned their duties. It's over. Oh, I would love it. Do it, especially after I saw that they requested a delay, and the guy said that's not happening. I said fuck mm, this. Nope. I Did you see out. they said that they've been completing episodes with only hours before the airtime? Dude, that's insane to me. That's so insane. Literally, imagine working on a product and then shipping it off to put it on the air within, like, a couple hours from the, when it's done. Yeah. That, Holy shit. That's what South Park does. Yeah, but South Park is made of paper mache. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> South Park ain't out here looking like Jujutsu Kaisen. If it did, it would be the greatest animated show of all time. <laughs> if they had the fucking co- production quality and the style of that. But they know they, they do it specifically. because, And they also tailored their production studio to be that way. They specifically created techniques to make it easier for their animators so that it can actually be done on time and stuff like that. Not to say that it's that is still a fucking crazy break breakneck break break, breakneck pace to work. So you know, I hope that they walked out because that that is insane to me. But you know what? There's no walking out of Zen basketball. Kuroko's basketball. Yeah, Yeah, you can't walk off the court. No, it's called traveling. It's very frowned upon. (laughs) Can't do it. Uh, <laughs> That's true. It's the rules. <laughs> it's literally against the rules. Uh, so let's get right into Koroko. I will be taking. Ha- I'll be handling the uh, talking points here. So we'll be going to episode twenty-one. Let's get started. That is literally the name of the episode. It is the twenty-first episode of Koroko. Koroko's basketball, aka the basketball which Koroko plays. So, uh, Koroko. Um, some teammates are still worried about Kuroko and uh, Kagami because they won't pass to each other, but Kiyoshi tells them, don't worry about it. Um, they're improving and they're talking to each other, and maybe they'll just be waiting for the right time to be passing to each other. They decide that, um, in a sequence, which is really funny, they talk about what summer camp- summer training camps they're going to go to, and, um, they end up deciding that they're going to go to two summer camps, but the way that it's delivered is, like, if as if a couple was deciding where to go to next on, like, a, <laughs> on, like, on a date or something, but they're actually just deciding where to take them, um... They decide that because because they're going to two camps this year, they don't actually have the money and the budget to get food. So that means that Rico is going to have to teach, is going to have to cook for them. Uh, so then they decide that they're going to have a training arc for her specifically so she can actually cook for them. Uh, she attempts to cook. And what she ends up cooking is curry because they think that's easy. Anyone can make curry. She gives them curry and... There's, like, full-on vegetables not even properly cut still inside of it, and they eat it, and it's terrible, and she has a look in it, and she's like, it's it's bad, isn't it? And they cut to her fingers, which have been, they have, like, uh, bandages on them to show that she's been working very hard on making her food and doing all this. So the captain guy says, it's delicious, he finishes off his curry, he eats it all, and he walks away. Uh, and then Tepe shows up and says, like, hey... Um, you may have gone a little bit overboard with some of the stuff, but you got the important part, which is love. I could really feel the love in this. And so the other dudes on the basketball team go, uh, go like, oh man, they're true men. 
there have never been <laughs> greater men than the one that they have right here. And then they go cut outside and they see that the team captain has died <laughs> from eating the food. He's on the floor and his soul is literally leaving his body. Meanwhile, Tepe is having shakes. He is that bad after eating the food. Um, they end up being saved because Kagami is cooking and he ends up cooking curry that tastes really good. Um, he says because he lives by himself, he actually learned, he has to learn how to make food for himself. So Rico says, you have to teach me how to make this curry. So he teaches her how to make curry and the curry comes out. It looks really good. It looks edible. They eat it and it still tastes like shit. So they wonder how did this happen? Kuriko is eating and he goes like, no, this is okay. This is good. Uh, and they go like, how did that happen? And then Tepe says, hey, did you serve your own plate? And he goes like, yeah, nobody noticed me. So I served my own plate. Um, and they showed like, hey, Rico, what were you doing while you served the plate? And she's like, okay, well, you put the rice down, you put the curry. And then they see that she's been actually putting in shredded cheese and, like, vitamin pills into it after cooking the food. <laughs> and they figure out that's where all the bad food comes from. And so they tell her, like, don't, don't do that, please, for the love of God. Uh, with the curry situation handled, they go off to summer holiday, um... Her dad actually is the one that drops him off before she before he leaves him. He says basically, don't touch my daughter or you're fucking dead. And they go, thank you, sir. And he leaves. Um, they go to practice in the mountain. Uh, they start. They first start by practicing on the beach. with, um, And they realize that they can't actually dribble on the beach. So they have to play like that. And they all start like playing. They're like playing like as if they were in the spaceship when Goku was going to Namek. Everything weighs a lot more for them. <laughs> then by the end of it, they actually end up being a lot stronger from it because now that they're in the sand, they're able to uh, move much better in their feet and Kagami is even able to jump even higher. The next morning, Kuriko and Kagami are brushing their teeth when Midorama and the other members, uh, the Shitaku, uh, Shit Shitoku? How do you pronounce his name? Shit Shit Sh Sh Shitoku. Shitoku. Shitoku, thank you. Shitoku. They actually chant it really slowly in their games. Shutoku, over and over again. <laughs> I've never been one for remembering the chants of others. <laughs> I've, that is never. <laughs> if, if it was enough to chant at me slowly to get me to say a Japanese <laughs> name right, I would not have multiple Go videos of me fucking up Japanese names. Um, anyway, they're also practicing in the same place, and... Uh, before this, Rico was talking about, like, they're doing okay, but they need, like, a fire under them to actually get them to properly train. Um, so they decide that from this, since they're both here at the same time, Shitoku is going to play against them in practice games. Uh, Kagami, before this, the, the game start, is told to go run and get a bunch of water for everyone. And because it's heavy, he should do it one at a time and keep going back and forth and back and forth and stuff like that while everyone is practicing. Um, everyone's practicing, and Midorama starts to realize is that um, uh, at one point, Kuroko starts to step up to Midorama, and everyone goes like, what? He can one-on-one, -on -one? and Midorama immediately fucking shuts him down. <laughs> uh... And says, like, hey, are you trying... Are you ignoring your limits? He's like, y I'm going to try and be better. That's it. And he tells him, like, you should be serious. You know that you suck. You should just embrace it. And focus on what you actually know how to do. But he refuses. He wants to get better. Um, the match ends up actually being pretty close to them. They still lose. But the other team is going, like, that's impressive. Because they don't even have uh, Kagami on their team. That is, uh, they've gotten much better since last time. Um, the, in the evening, Midorama tells Ta uh, Takeo that the reason that Kuroko is, he does touch passing on the ball is because he actually doesn't have any presence when he touches the ball. Um, the reason is, is because the ball is the focus of attention. If Kuroko actually has it, he can't use misdirection with it. Like, because he's just so bad at being able to pass when he holds it. So what he does is that he, that's what he does all the touch passing and stuff like that. Because he's actually able to do it. But if he ever learned how to use misdirection while holding it, he'd be unstoppable. Uh, and then we cut to uh, Midorama, who has finally arrived from taking all the water. And Rico goes like, 
what do you mean you just finished? And then she notices the water and she sees that he actually got water for his team and the other team. So he's actually done double the amount of running back and forth that she had actually planned for him. And as he goes off, he says, I'm going to go take a shower and finally rest. And the episode ends with him going into the showers and learning that it actually closed because there's like an old man. And we get a shot of him like just a towel going like, oh, man. The showers are closed, aren't you? As he puts a tear in his eyes. <laughs> As he cries, realizing he's not going to be actually able to relax at all. <laughs> and that is episode 21. And how do you feel, Zen? Uh, it's a good, it's a cute episode. I like the uh, reveal that he's been doing the running like twice as much. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole, the whole little like group training thing that's i think is in this episode and another one uh, another couple after this one is a uh, really good <laughs> it's it's very cute yes it, it is um i really liked it i liked them kind of training they got their ass kicked pretty bad so you need this kind of training um to get your main characters back up there and they are at least recognizing and i think they talk about it in the next episode that their team needs to actually fully develop a play style or they're never ever actually going to be able to win um, it was good to see Minorama. I think in these actually uh, next upcoming episodes, he's, I think, actually, maybe... There's something he does in a later episode that makes me think that he's actually the greatest in the Generation of Miracles. <laughs> I think he might be my favorite character from there. <laughs> he's just a funny guy, and the the fact that his ability is, I can just shoot very far... Is I can very just funny. shoot anywhere, yeah. Yeah, is very funny. Also, yeah, he's a, he's a goofy little dude. He is. Uh, he is a goofy dude and he fits and he's also still menacing. I think that's the thing that works out. I think he ends up being like, funny enough, Minorama is kind of like what you expect. It's like the abridged version of Kaiba (laughs) where he's actually, he's an actual funny guy. But then when he actually is like time to like, be like, okay, Wheeler, you're going fucking down. Stuff like that. It's actually still menacing. (laughs) It's so he ends up working very well, uh, in that regard. And yeah, in general, it was a very nice just kind of hangout. I liked all the cooking food bit. Uh, her, when she made the curry and she had full on, like, full on carrot in there, and they're like, What the hell was all the slicing and dicing you were doing? Because <laughs> she was literally, like, slicing it up, and, and, and none of that showed and what the food that was going in there. It was really funny. Uh, both of the dudes, both of the team captains or the seniors, like, going out and, like, eating the curry because they see how hard she worked on it. And both immediately fucking dying (laughs) was really funny. And, yeah, in general, it was a very good get-into-the-groove-of-things episode. Um, very enjoyable. And like you said, yeah, the stuff of Kagami as as he's training, as he's having his own Goku moment of being stronger and trying to get his power in line is very uh cool and interesting uh and this is also where this is also the episode where i noticed um that the name of the ep- the name of the op is rimfire and we have never talked about it <laughs> yeah uh rimfire goes hard man it's a really it, good song it is a really good song i just like i want to bring to focus the fact that we've never brought up that the name of the song is just all capitals rimfire <laughs> hilarious name very good uh let's go on to the next episode which is <clears throat> i'll win even if it kills me uh let me just be 100 percent sure on this because actually there is i want to make sure if this is the right okay this might be so there was there was actually a an episode where it's an additional episode it's like 22.5 I think let me just be sure for some reason I instinctively put in Gintama when I wanted to look up Kuroko no Basket <laughs> let me be sure on this one um, oh yeah there is a there is a the, it's like the flashback episode yes it's the flashback episode I don't want to yeah. accidentally skip it so I don't think it's going in this one because I watched it so there was not five episodes to watch but there were six um okay that's coming after this one um but we'll go to episode 22. I wasn't sure if it was 21.5 or it was 22.5. Yeah, it's um, 22.5. We'll go with this one then. I'll win even if it kills me. It's episode 22. <clears throat> so, Shutoku has won all three practice matches against Seirin. But all the games were played without Kagami. 
and the scores differ by less than 10 points. Uh, Kagami learns that his jumping power has improved by a lot. Like, they have, like, a scene where he's, like, jumping, and um, he jumps with his left foot, and it's pretty high. But then she tells him to jump off the other foot, and he jumps, like, insane. Like, he knocks over the bat the thing that they were he was trying to jump near. Like, it's insane how high his jumps are now. Uh, Midorama tells him that um, he may be able to jump higher now, but that's only, like, a half answer. And he challenges him to a one-on-one -on -one match where... If Ron, Minorama wins, uh, where where it's like all the all he needs to do to win is to get past him once, and he's unable to do that. Minorama wins by forcing Kagami to jump only off his right foot. Um, uh, the reason is is that when he jumps on his right foot, he's actually he has he shoots with his left, and the only thing he's able to do with his left is dunk. So it's actually super a easy to stop him because he never does anything but dunk when he's jumping off his right foot. That's why he was able to stop him. Uh, Kagami realizes that he has to improve his ball handling in his left hand, and that's the only way he's going to eventually win an aerial battle if he wants to beat any of the members of the Generation of Miracles. Um, Kuroko comes up, because he's been watching him this entire time, uh, and he wants to master his own drive in addition to passes. So he wants to like learn something new. Um, the rest of the team also goes on training, and they're training in the camp, uh, camp finishes off, and before they head to the station, uh, Saren makes a detour to the inter-high quarterfinal match, which is between the Toho Academy and Kaijo, which is going to be a Kisei versus Omine fight. And it's going to be them going against each other, even though Kisei always went against Omine, but he was never ever a actually able to beat him on a one one game. And that is where this episode... Uh, it leaves off. Zen, how do you feel? This one banks. Uh, I love the parking lot scene with uh, Midorima uh, and Kagami, mm -hmm. where he's like, you know, oh, one on one, you know, you can't shoot. Like, I'll, I'll crush you. And he's like, no, it doesn't matter how good you are at dunking because it's all that you do. You, you have no ability other than this. I can easily just stop you every time. Um, it's a cool little. A little bit where Kagami kind of gets re-humbled, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, and I like when uh, his little fuck. What's his What's his little friend's name? Oh shit! It's like to I can't remember his name. Tokyo To. Uh, shit! What is? Oh, dude! Why can't I remember his name? I, wait, I literally mentioned it last episode. <laughs> I know, and it's just completely gone out of my Takao. That's Takao. It. Yes, Takao. Takao. Uh, yeah, he it, well, he's like gets caught spying on what they're doing. It's funny, um, mm -hmm. and then the setup for Kisei versus Amine is so cool. The, all, all of what is about to happen is so cool. It is. It one hundred percent is, and it uh, it was a good episode for setup. Uh, and yeah, in general, just saying like, hey, even though you're getting this power, don't think you're actually going to win because Generation of Miracles is just every single one of us is just that dude. So don't don't think that just jumping is going to be enough. Very nice. And we'll go into the next episode because things are about to get crazy. But we'll start with episode 22.5, which is to... Oh, yeah, my specific... Other than I liked it, it was really good. I It's very hard for me to take notes during Kuroko because when it's good, I just watch it. <laughs> Yeah, because it's just, like, intense the whole time. It is, and it was a really cool, like, standoff between the two. I really liked the idea of, like, how... Even, like, his setup of saying, like, oh, yeah, you just need to make a single basket and you win. And he isn't able to do that, and then he immediately tells him, and then I like the part where he's, like, running on the beach, and he's like, I figured out what to do, but I'm angry because it was this asshole who told me how to do it, and I didn't figure it out myself. I fucking hate this guy. I hate him so much. Fuck him, but he helped me, and that's why I'm running. Because I need to... It's the only way to get the frustrations out of me. And, uh, yeah, it's very good. Um, let's move on to episode 22.5, which is this, uh, like a .5 episode before the actual next episode. So this one's called Tip Off. Uh, this is episode is about the uh, generational miracles in, t in when they were in Teiko. Um, to start off, Kisei is modeling and mentioning that he had joined the Taiko's basketball club. Um, 
Kisei is cleaning the school's court when uh, Mome informs him to, that he's going to be joining the first string for practice. Uh, and that his mentor is going to be uh, Kuroko. And he's, he's looking around and he's seeing like all the cool dudes that are like doing cool dude things. And they're be, like, being impressive. And then he sees that his <laughs> mentor is Kuroko. <laughs> and he immediately has the feeling of like, wait, him? Um... Uh, Kuroko's a senior while well, Kisei only joined like, like two weeks. That's just how crazy his improvement has been. Uh, Kuroko lacks no presence, obviously, because uh, he's Kuroko, and that makes Kisei doubt any, everything about him. Um, Kisei is impressed by the first string in the practice game. Kisei then plays a game and makes a shot with ease. He sees Kuroko going for a layup, and he just completely misses it, and he gets yelled at, saying, like, if you're going to go for a layup, you should actually make it. <laughs> Uh, he again he starts to doubt Kuroko has any ability and at the end of the practice Kuroko appears besides uh, Kisei in like a jump scare uh, as he's right next to him and Kuroko suggests that they clean up um, with the first years and Kisei concludes that Kuroko is just a mentor in the miscellaneous clubs activity not basketball <laughs> he's just so <laughs> unsure of what makes Kuroko anything good um, Aumine Kuroko and Murasakabara which I think is the big dude right yeah, the huge guy, Murasakibara. Yeah. Murasakibara. They wait for Kisei at the school's entrance to celebrate uh, Kisei getting first string. And their idea of celebration is for him to buy them ice pops. <laughs> With the idea of being, whatever, you have a modeling job, you can afford it. Um, Midorama joins the celebration because um, uh, Kuroko invited him. And Kisei uh, thought he was just a random stranger. <laughs> After introducing himself, uh, he says that Kisei should at least remember the names of the regulars, and he says that everyone here is a regular. Um, Umura Sakabara goes into the convenience store, and Kuroko gets an I-1 from his uh, popsicle. Um, everyone gets like, super pumped that Kuroko won something. <laughs> everyone is really happy and going, going together. Umura Sakabara comes back out and asks what happened with Kuroko, and they see that he's holding a box of Malboys. Um, it just, uh, just to eat by himself. Um, then Momoi appears, uh, and she's holding the ice cream stick. Um, and I think it was like Koriko's giving it to her and she takes it as like a great, like, oh my God, he gave it to me. Thank you so much. Um, a bike comes out of nowhere and is running off and a woman shouts like, Hey, uh, Aumine, I think ends up pulling Momo, Momoi down to save her from being actually hit by the bike. And she goes like, hey, watch out. A uh, woman shouts that that's a purse snapper. So Kisei and Almini both run after the bike uh, while Kuroko attends to Momoi. Um, Midorima says, you guys are idiots chasing after a scooter. You're never going to catch it. He grabs Murasakabara's box and he fucking makes the most insane three-pointer in the history of the world as he shoots the box all the way towards the biker's face, hitting him and causing him to, uh, to skid off the road. Amine and Kisei catch up to him and stop him from fleeing with the woman's bag. Uh, the biker tries to throw a punch, and Murasakabara is there, and he's uh, pissed that this man is the reason that his Mao boys are gone. And that he's, like, stepped on his Mao boys, and he's ruining them, and they stop him. Uh, Momoi praises them, and Kuroko said, Man, what great teamwork, and Kisei makes note that Kuroko didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, eh, but neither did I. But I guess everyone's happy. Um, and that's when they Kisei learns that everyone right there is a starter, including Kuroko, and Kisei's like, what? Um... The next day at Taiko, um, a horde of fangirls are watching Kisei play soccer uh, with Murray Sakabara as the goalkeeper who just stands there. It's like me when I'm playing soccer. <laughs> just does nothing to stop the ball whatsoever. Um, Kisei asks Murray Sakabara about Kuroko and says, he says Kuroko is a good person and becoming a starter was uh, Kashi's decision. Uh, then Kisei says, who is Akashi? I don't know him. And Murasakabara then says, um, to ask Kisei, <laughs> he then says, and who are you? <laughs> and Kisei says, like, we literally ate popsicles yesterday. Do you not remember me at all? Uh, then Kisei moves on to Midorima, and Midorima brings up the name, uh, Akashi, and Kisei is still curious about who he is. 
Uh, Minorima states that Kuroko is an Aquarius um, and a bunch of oh, like horoscope related things like he's a blood type A and that they are completely incompatible with each other and he's also telling him this like through a dinosaur that he has in his hand um, and he walks away leaving Kisei just to go like what the hell was that um, Kisei asks Momoi about Kuroko and she goes oh my god Kuroko and fangirls away <laughs> uh, and, uh, and Akashi is watching from from the rafters, not like the not actual rafters, but like Sting, he's far away and he's just like watching. Um, at the practice game, Kisei steals the ball from Kuroko and shoots. Um, still unconvinced, Kisei asks Almine the reason why Kuroko's a starter, and Almine says Kuroko's just different, and he's very reliable in a game. Uh, Mitarima informs Kisei that Kuroko that they will practice in the second string game as a backup, and if they lose, they will lose their first starter. Um, um status and it's always like they're they always put the first strings in the second and third string games um just to make sure that they always win no matter what and if again like if they lose they get demoted to the second string um they both set out and before they do kisei still doubting Kuroko says like hey um if you win if i win then i replace you as a starter and then Kuroko goes, no, no, <laughs> and then they go, no, <laughs> no, I, the, you gotta appreciate the a straightforward MC like Kuroko, you guys like, nah, I don't want to do that, <laughs> so they don't do it, um, everyone in Taiko is super rowdy, um, uh, the referee is like very unbiased with his decisions, he's hard on them, but soft on the, uh, the opposing team. Um, he bring Kisei gets brought in when there's a 20 point gap and he gets double teamed and he is in constant check against everyone. And, and even like a tiny thing that he does, he gets charged for foul. Uh, so the point gap doesn't go any, uh, it doesn't change at all, even though Kisei's in there. So they bring in Kuroko. Uh, everyone on the, uh, on the opposing team mocks Kuroko because they're like, who is this guy? He has literally no anything. Um, Kuroko asks Kisei support in the game, saying that he's a shadow and Kisei is the light. Kisei is unable to believe, still doesn't believe that Kuroko will do anything. Um, and while he's being double teamed, Kuroko is left undefended because literally no one on the opposing team thinks that, the, that anything's going to happen. And like in the single blink of an eye, the ball is suddenly in Kisei's hands. <laughs> and everyone's like, wait, what? Uh, this is obviously the ability of Kuroko, and Kisei takes that chance, and they makes a shot, and they keep showing Kisei making shot after shot. You after Kuroko gives him the ball using his ability, and they win. Uh, Midorima questions Akashi about Kisei and Kuroko being in the game together. Akashi said that Kisei would be a starter soon, and so he has to see Kuroko's abilities firsthand because if he doesn't see it, then obviously he's just never gonna know. Uh, and he also reveals that he was the one who found out about Kuroko's talent. Um, yeah, and then Taiko wins. Kisei doesn't, um, Kisei doesn't think Kuroko's sacrificial talent is fun for him, and Kuroko says, yeah, it's not fun. Um, and then he starts calling Kuroko Kurokichi for the first time, and he says he does that for all people that, um, he respects, and Kuroko says, ew, don't do that. And that's where the episode <laughs> ends! And that is the backstory for Tip Off. Very detailed in this one compared to the other one. <laughs> How do you feel about this episode, Zen? Uh, it's great. I love the flashback. Stopping the purse snatcher is so stupid, it's hilarious. Oh, it's so he good. launches that popsicle box like halfway down the street and cracks a moving bike in the head. Um, and then the game later where Kuroko's kind of showing off and Kisei's starting to get it is very cool. Yeah, the the slow realization of like discovering Kuroko for the first time is a wonder to behold. I I had forgotten because you're just so used to it, and it's been a while since someone's actually been like surprised. Like we've seen in the last couple games that people have just known how to stop Kuroko and stuff. Um, and in this one, we're going back to like, no, no, this is an insane ability that he has. <laughs> it's only when he's going against other people in the Generation of Miracles who know how to stop him is that when it's like, oh no, this is a useless ability. Uh, against us specifically, because we know what you're doing, but the hidden potential in it is so great. 
is it's it's good to have like a uh to see it again and yeah in general it was really fun to go see everyone in the back to see the generation of miracles it's weird to see almine and he's not like pissed off <laughs> like you actually see yeah him. he's like he's like chill back then yeah the way he's chill back then in general the way everyone hangs out even like um almine feels like he's a little bit more chill compared to what he is now um almost like there's an actual break point that happens when the generation of miracles probably after kuroko leaves or actually after almine gets the way he is that's when things go bad and things don't... well it's it, there there is an actual specific break point that we'll get to later on much later okay um, all right fair we'll enough. learn what happened yeah you don't have to tell them the way they are yeah yeah it, um, but you get to see them before all that, and they actually seem like a really fun group of dudes. Yes, they're great. Yeah. They're... Um, it's also really funny because I'm. this is like a an anime-only thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's the first time you really see Murasaki Bara, like at all. Yes. Um, which is super jarring because... <laughs> They they don't really like introduce him. There's like, oh, it's it's him also because the manga readers know who that is. Yeah, anime only people. And you're just like, oh, there's just this fucking big guy here. That's how I felt. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess that's the other. I felt that way about him and the way about the uh, Akashi, the same guy. I thought that they had just actually put in the puppet man from the Akatsuki <laughs> into Goriko for a bit. Because he looks almost exactly like him, except for his hair is like a slightly different shade of red. <laughs> and he's not a puppet man. Um, it was a little bit jarring to see these two dudes that have just like not been featured. And funny enough, when this season ends, they hype them up too, as well. <laughs> but without actually showing them. But either way, it was nice to see both of them. Uh, yeah, that bit where he throws. he might. I think I said that back then, and I'll say it now. He might be the, in fact, the greatest to ever do it. The way he picks up those bops, those uh, those snacks, and then just immediately tosses it, and the big dude's reaction just being like, "Hey, <laughs> yeah, my, snack. like, oh, my snacks." <laughs> yeah, he's so uncare. He didn't care until that guy destroyed his snacks. And he's like, "Nah, you're you're so dead. Get out of here." Um, I also like the bit where uh, Kuroko shows up like he's a horror villain <laughs> and scares uh, Kise. Uh. Because that's what I fully realized that Kuroko looks like a little rascal member in a business suit pretending to be an adult when he's next <laughs> to Kisei. <laughs> oh, it's really funny. But yeah, in general, it's a really cool look back. And it's interesting to see the Generation of Miracles before the the break point that you said that is coming that I don't know about yet. And see like dudes like Aomine actually be like happy. And playing their game and stuff like that. It's <laughs> very different. But very cool. And some good backstory to go into. And now let's go back on track because we're going to talk about episode... Do you have anything to say before we move on? Nope. Okay, cool. Let's talk about episode 23. I'm not mature. Um, so the match between the uh, Kaijo and the Two Academy? Is that what it's called? Uh-oh. To oh to oh that makes sense. To Academy and the Kaijo uh, high begins. Um, Kaijo gets the ball. Uh, Kisei manages to pass to. Um, Kisei manages to pass to Almine, but Almine steals the ball. Um, Sakurai scores the first three points, and then Kisei copies Sakurai's three points shot. But he gets blocked by Omine. Uh, that's when Kamasamatsu regains the ball for Kaijo to score the three-pointer to just make it so that they are on the same uh, point value and stuff. Uh, and Kaijo tightens their defense. Kisei then manages to stop Omine's quick dribble and drive, and is formally shot. Uh, the first quarter ends with Kaijo leading 18 to tw- uh, 18 to 13. From the sidelines, uh, Kuroko mentions that Almine tends to improve as the game goes on, and Toho immediately catches up on the second quarter. Kaijo calls for a timeout, and Kiche asks his, his coach permission to use the trump card. So this is the actual start of the game, and there's not much to say other than basketball happens here at the basketball start. Basketball do be happening, and yes. it's pretty good. Very good basketball. Um, I like the way it kind of sets up uh a like 
back and forth match of being like, yeah, no, we need to go. We basically we can't let them take the lead because if they do, we're just kind of screwed. So we have to actually apply pressure to them. It really does feel like the um, Kisei's group is overall better than Almine's group. They're able to like. Like, the way that they're playing it off is Aomine's group is a bunch of dudes individually playing basketball, but Kisei's team at least feels like an actual team. So that's the way that they're actually able to combat them and be able to, like, score three points and actually keep things fairly competitive. And it's against Aomine's team, which is no pushover, pushover and they're actually starting with Aomine in the front of the game. <laughs> like, that would seem borderline impossible to uh, beat in any capacity, but they're actually giving it to them. And they're doing really well, too. So that's really cool to see. Um, the thing I like is the 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 kind of like the slow buildup of Kisei and Almine going against each other. They really build it up in the next upcoming episodes, but this is the start of, like, yeah, Kisei is trying to kind of get on Almine's level, but he's not fully 100% there and Almine still has him in check in a lot of cases I think I don't remember if it was this episode or the previous episode where it ends with them like talking in the um in the locker room I can't remember which of the start but they they specifically talk about like Almine is actually kind of excited and he's actually there to start the game and the reason is is that he can actually go all in against Kisei and not have to worry about the person being just, like, destroyed. That's, uh, this episode, I believe. Okay. Yeah, they, he talks about it. Like, he has a glee in his eye that's like, oh, he won't break. <laughs> this is gonna go great. And so he's actually kind of excited to go against them. Uh, and I think it's either during this episode, near the end of this one or the next one, but they mention very specifically, um, Almine doesn't know the potential of Kisei, because Momoi tries to give it to him and he refuses it. The other team knows, but he specifically made sure not to know because he didn't want it or he didn't think he needed it, whatever the case. Um, and that's another side that they show about why his team is so good. Is like, yeah, they have Almine, but then they also have this insane ability of this girl where she just knows the full potential of all the players. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It's a good setup to start uh, for the game, I'd, I'd, I'd say. Um... And yeah, just really good basketball being played. Very fun to watch. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the, the Kisei versus Almine game is like the first time we see any of them really do anything where they're not just like either competing against Kagami or smoking randoms. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's so good. The, the next episode is better because it's when Kisei busts out the... Um, the big move but it, it this one's still good it's a good warm-up yeah it is it is for sure and let's go to the next one in this one uh episode 24 don't get the wrong idea uh the thing the the big plan that kisei mentioned that he's gonna try and do is that he's going to attempt to copy almine uh he kind of has he kind of has like this, like, he starts to, so the reason is, is that he needs time to actually do it. So Toho is um, able to get a huge lead on him because he's trying to do something that is borderline impossible because it's Almine. He shouldn't have an ability, like, he shouldn't be able to copy it because it, it'd be insane if he was able to do that. Uh, I think they mentioned it specifically. Kisa can only copy dudes that it, he can only copy abilities that are in his specific wheelhouse. So if he was trying to copy Shaq, he wouldn't be able to copy Shaq. Because there's a huge difference between Kisei and Shaq. But they don't say specifically Shaq. But I'm just using him as an example. <laughs> this is how I understood it. But Almine, he should in theory be able to do it if he's on some kind of level to him. As long as he's not doing anything that he couldn't do himself. Um... Yeah, this, basically he can't copy something that's physically impossible for him. Yeah. But otherwise, it's he should be fine. Yeah, and Kisei starts to talk about like his philosophy behind this, which is that um, the reason that he could never copy Almine is that he looked up to Almine, and he can't copy someone that he looks up to. 
So what he has to do to en to enable his ability to copy him is that he has to actually leave those feelings behind. And only by leaving behind those feelings is he going to be able to actually, like, um, copy him properly and do what he does. Um, they kind of catch pretty on because he starts doing some of the moves that um, Aumine does. And a lot of the times they're, like, checking him um, or trying to stop him from actually doing what he does. And this is actually really good uh, set up for later because it shows up. It, this ends up coming in to let you know fully that um, he's able to copy him and stuff. But the, uh, during the break period, they start talking about like, hey, it would be a really bad fucking thing if this guy was able to copy Almine. <laughs> we, I don't, like, what do we do? What do we do if he's actually able to copy Almine? We don't never, the idea of like, Almine this entire time is saying, the only one who can beat me is me, which is very similar to the guy from Gintama who says, the only person who can uh -huh. kill me is myself. No, he says, I want to kill myself. My bad. Oh, man, I was replacing his what Almine says to him in Gintama. <laughs> <laughs> I just now realized I was using the wrong quote, God damn it! <laughs> I'm gonna look so foolish. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, but he says specifically the only one that can beat me is me don't worry about it um kuroko comes up and talks to kisei he's here with uh number two which is the dog kuroko uh they start talking about stuff and you know talking about like hey would you win um kuroko is surprised that he wouldn't give him a gojo yeah i'd win uh, he actually is very unsure if he'd be able to win. That's how close he is in this match specifically, is that he would like to say I would win, but he just isn't sure if he'd be able to. Um, they get back into the game. In the third quarter, um, Kisei is finally able to complete his copy of Almine, and he does it by executing Almine's signature plays. And this is where he's finally able to do what Almine does, which is the where when they f what Almine does is that you actually can't foul him because even if you foul him he still makes the shot in, um, and that was something that um, Kisei wasn't able to do is that he was attempting to do the shots themselves but when they went for the uh, for the foul they were actually able to stop him and it was enough but this time when he to show that he's actually fully mastered it they go for the foul he still is able to make it in and then he uh, gets the free throw shot. So now fouls are basically useless against against Kisei because he's adapted to Amine style to the point where if he tries to go for these crazy shots, they're not going to be able to stop him by fouling him. They're just going to have to let it happen. Um, he even gets Amine to foul him himself, and then he does like that sick fucking shot he does where he shoots it from the back. <laughs> um, and then this is Amine's... Um, a foul and then he puts him into foul trouble because i think he's fouled him like four times something like that where he basically if he gets one more foul he'll be kicked out of the game um toa is still leading by 10 points but almines and um but now they're in a very bad situation where now they're going against someone who is has the who was copied uh almines abilities um and also if almine gets one more foul he's basically out of the game and at that point they're not going to be able to win if he's out of the game um so they're not sure what to do and everyone is like doubting that almine would be able to do anything and he answers back by blocking a dunk that kisei was going to do and said like you think that four fouls would have stopped me wrong i'm still him <laughs> And yeah, that's what's still him. Hashtag him. <laughs> Hashtag him as he blocks him and he goes like, I don't know who the fuck you think you're fucking with, but I am still him and I'm going to win this game. And that is where the episode ends. And that is episode 24. Don't get the wrong idea. Zen, what a good ass episode of basketball. <laughs> uh, Dude, go ahead. crazy. Tell him when, what uh, When he gets the... the uh... Like he almost gets the um, fucking formula shot, and he gets bumped, and it just barely doesn't go in. So good. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. This is uh, 
the their face off when he finally fully does it and he fucking does the shot back to him and he's got like the the yellow aura <laughs> while his blue aura and he gets like shook. He actually gets shook. This is the first time you've seen Almine shook in any capacity. And he goes like, "Wait a minute. <laughs> he shouldn't be able to do that." Oh, it's so good. And the way, it's also animated so amazingly as well. Like, the shot of him playing basketball is some top-notch stuff. And, oh, it's so, it's just so fucking good to see. Um, the other thing I really liked, like I said, I liked a lot of the build-up for them being able to copy Almine. I really liked how Mine is just going like, you know what? He's just so sure that he's just not going to be able to do it, that it'll be fine. But I actually really like this game because at the same time, they actually show what it means to be a part of the Generation of Miracles. Because this actually is a crazy thing where they show two miracles happening at the same time. With Kuriko, you can kind of see it. Like, I think that the reason they're called Generation of Miracles is not only just because it's a really good-ass name, but they also are able to create these miraculous situations on the court where they're able to create a way to win that you just would never have seen coming and you can see it here with kisei when he learns almine's stuff it's actually frightening and it does like mental damage to absolutely everyone yeah, on the they team they all take like, immediate psychic damage <laughs> like, they oh, do shit. they're like oh my god and he was not supposed to be able to do that and he actually creates a miracle where it looks like his team has a way to win now and almine is in the same situation where now he's in a terrible terrible situation because now he's fighting against someone who is able to do stuff very similar to him he shook him to his very core to the point where like they try and pass him the ball and he gets stolen because he's like just doesn't know how to react to it not only that he has the four fouls on him it would take literally a miracle for him to still have a shot in this and most people would give up but then they show he's still able to conjure it up and that's why he's in the generation of miracles is that he's able to still block it not worrying about the foul and being like no nah, no nah, we we still got this there's still a chance to win so he creates an it's like a two miracles fighting against each other <laughs> mm -hmm. where both are entering into a state where if it was anyone else they would lose but because it's literally a generation of miracle fight it's a miracle fight of both dudes like exchanging miracles <laughs> to see who can do the better miracle and it's a wonder to behold it's a great back and forth as they go back. And like I said, I like a lot of, like, Kisei also kind of, like, talking about how much he respects and loves Almine. But at the same time, the only way he's ever going to be able to win is to put those feelings aside and come after him. And he also does this thing where um, after he realizes, because Almine realizes that his plan, it was like a twofold plan. One, count, uh, copy him. And the other plan was to get him to have four fouls. So that at the end of the day, uh, if he got an additional one, he would li he would be kicked off the court, and at that point, the game is over. Like you have, if one basically both sides have an Almine, and if either one of them loses, the other team is just fucked. There's nothing they can do. <laughs> There's no coming back from it. Um. Man, what was I saying? But yeah, they, he realizes that's his plan, and there's a specific look that Kisei gives him. He's like, "That's the reason why you gave me that look, is because you're." borderline ashamed of like this is the way that you're going to win <laughs> like there's something about it that like uh it doesn't feel right like he feels like he's winning but he's not winning the way he wants to which is 100 percent he wants to win by beating him one-on-one -on -one. but he also realizes that he's using things outside of his purview to actually beat him because he's just that strong and he needs it and it's a great uh it's a great story and it's a great back and forth here it really is that this battle between them is some top tier stuff it's crazy good oh and it's so enjoyable to watch as well <laughs> but yeah that yeah, is the, the mm -hmm. thing with uh with any sort of like close game in kuriko is even though you know it's not real you're sitting there like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. The timer, like, what's that? How, how many points do they have? What's happening? Yeah, it's yeah. It's so stressful. And then it's great, It's great too, because they built up Almine to the point of... He feels like an unbeatable monster, basically. Um, 
he's just so good at what he's doing that there's no way even if it was someone from the generation of miracles there's no way that they could conceivably beat him and then they find a way to actually make it interesting and be like no there's a way and it's by someone who's literally always practiced against them and even though they've always prefaced it saying that he's never beaten them that doesn't mean that he can't beat them in this one and they're actually able to like in your head you would go in going into this i was like this is just easy i mean wins this but by the point that you get to this episode you're like maybe he's actually got a legitimate shot <laughs> Like, it, it feels like it was actually over for him up until he stops that dunk and says, like, no, it's not over by any means of the imagination. Um, and it's really cool. It's really well done. And, yeah, that's, uh, let's get to the end of this arc and the end of season one, Zen. Let's go to episode 25. Called Our Basketball, where we will, we're going to talk more about this, but we need to at least go to the end of the game. <laughs> Um, so we get to the game, uh, they're in their fourth quarter. It starts with, um, uh, after Kisei successfully copied Almine's play style, he's currently on par with Almine, uh, which causes his team to let Almine do what he wants, uh, despite having four fouls. Like, he, they have, like, a group meeting and they say, like, all right, what are we gonna do? And Almine basically says, screw whatever plan you have going forward or you were making. I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. Give me the damn ball. Um, other people on his seat, on his team, the one dude, basically, it's the one dude who's always like, you can't do this, man. They basically say, shut up. That's the only way we can win is that he has to be able to win this because no one can actually <laughs> beat Kisei. Like none of the other dudes are on the same level of Kisei at this point because he's copied down Mine style. Um, and so they're just going to have to give him all the ball and they're going to have to hold back the team and they're going to have to do their best. Um... Almina and Kisei are trading baskets with each other. There's only one minute to go. Uh, Kaijo is down still eight points. Like, they haven't really moved. Like, the goalpost is basically... They're at a point now where they can go... They need to go lower. With one minute go, if the other team makes a point, it will be too big of a difference. Basically, 10 is the breaking point, where if they go over 10, there's no way for them to win. But if they can get under, then there's a chance for them to win. Uh, especially because if they make a goal, uh, not make a goal, if they make a, a score at this point, the other team will just get completely, like, <laughs> they'll suffer emotional damage. And they'll take psychic damage and they'll hit, get hit in the motivation. <laughs> and they'll be able to, like, lower their guard a little bit. Um, Kaijo needs a score to turn things around. Kisei makes a formless shot of his own, uh, but Almine defends against it, forcing uh, Kisei to pass to Kamasa. Kamasamatsu. Kasamatsu. Kasamatsu. Thank you. Um, and this is the part where Almine is able to finally like break through, and he anticipates it uh, and deflects the pass out of bounds. And this is where they basically say like this is that was their last chance. They've lost. And Almine tells them basically like, hey, um, you've lost. You were doing really good, but you made a single mistake. You were copying my style, but there's one thing that I would never do. Because at this point, they were, like, face each face to face to each other. And they said, like, is he going left or is he going right? It was a 50-50. But he did something that uh, Almine would never do, which is pass the ball. <laughs> he would never do that. And he says, like, the reason I never pass is that it's actually very obvious when you're going for a pass. So the second I saw your eyes move to a different direction, that was my goal to let me know you're going for a pass. And it was very easy to stop you at that point. So you lose because you actually relied on someone else, which is something I, I would never do. Um, everyone is real. He's real crushed about basically his chance has gone away. His captain tells him like, hey, don't worry about it. The game is not over. Keep playing. And the game ends with Almine dunking on Kisei as the game, as the final buzzer beater, basically. And uh, Tao wins uh, 110 to 98. After the game, um, basically, like right as the the final dunk goes on, um, they realize Kisei can't get up by himself because he's been pushing himself to actually uh, to uh, copy Almine, and it's took a it's taken a real toll on his body to the point that he's not able to actually get up on his own power. So his captain is there, and he helps him up by picking him up, and he like shoulders him out. And um, Almine makes his way to leave. 
Uh, as he's leaving, I think it's uh, Momoi asked him specifically, is there anything you want to say to him? Like, it, it, you wouldn't want to stay for something? He's like, there's nothing for winners to say to losers. And he leaves him out that. Um, they all say goodbye. Um, it looks like the captain looks like... I don't mean... Uh, Kisei's taking it real bad. He's crying as they're leaving the court. Um, everything kind of gets back together. They say they're thank you for the game as they leave. As they're leaving the game, Kisei goes like, oh, where's the captain? I should go. And then the other members of his team are telling him, don't, don't, don't bother it. Um, and the reason Kisei realizes is that the captain is actually taking it the hardest. And he's like in the, he's still in the locker room and he's like banging on the lockers, crying, uh, before this match started, you can see that previously the last time that the, the team left. Last time that this guy was on a championship where they could have won, he made a single mistake by missing a pass, and that's what cost him. And he was made team captain specifically because uh, the guy thinks that he's going to be able to redeem himself, and he wanted to redeem himself here, but he wasn't able to, and they were they lost because of it, so he's taking it extremely hard. Um, so Kise lets him basically lament to himself and he's gonna go do better um and he's gonna go power himself up and stuff like that um kagami and kuroko end up having there's also a shot here as they're all leaving they we see the other generation of miracles which is the really big fucking guy because uh because almine was there and he was in there in disguise but his disguise is the same shit the disguise that he's always had which is just the just the glasses and nothing else <laughs> Uh, but as they're leaving, they see that the other member of Generation of Miracles is there and he's about to have his game. Uh, Kagami, I think, wants... I think they say at some point Kagami wants to stay and see because he's going to see the other Generation of Miracles kind of go against each other, but they don't have enough money to actually stay around, so they have to leave. Um, as they're leaving, um, it looks like they're going to... They're waiting for them to leave and they realize that they can't leave yet because of Koriko. Both Koriko and Kagami are on the court. And they decide that um, they want to create their own style of basketball because they're pumped after seeing that game. That was crazy. So they want to do the same, and they want to do it together. And they're going to beat. We're, they're going to win whatever in the winter game that is coming up. And that is where the season ends with them both, both in the basketball court with Kuroko finally passing him after he has not passed the ball since they lost. And Kuroko, uh, not Kuroko, um, Kagami doing a layup, and that's where the season ends. And that is the end for Kuroko Season 1. We also have a shot all the way at the end. Um, they say winter will be our war. I think there's a shot, that's the final line, is like, winter will be war. As they talk about, like, the game that they're about to have. But I forgot, the other generation of Miracle Guy was shown in one of the pa passages. Where they're talking about, like, how good the generation of miracles is like they talk about like kisei almine um the others and like the two that have not been featured yet are like eat one's eating and the other one is i think playing shogi the yeah it's uh murasaki bara and uh akashi yeah they're both they're showed there but they're not shown their faces even though we know how they look like now <laughs> after 22.5 but yeah that's where the season ends and that is our basketball zen how do you feel zen uh, banger all the way through. What a good game. Yeah. And I also really like how much like characterization this does for them because a lot of stereotypical stuff you'll have like uh, characters like Almine who are the best. Like as soon as they start losing, they just break down. Um, and he doesn't. He's like, all right, I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> like, I'm just if you're gonna keep messing with me, I'm just gonna crush you. Um, and then I like that. Kise, who was kind of in the flashback episode, even where he's like, I can kind of do everything. I don't really care. Like, he's very flippant. Um, when he loses this big, huge game, he ends up bursting into tears. He realizes that he, like, he really gives a shit, right? Like, he cares mm -hmm. a lot about about winning. It, it's great character work for all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because I I, you probably don't know this because you haven't read the manga, but um, Kise is much nicer in the anime than he is in the manga. In the manga, he's kind of an asshole. Really? Um, <laughs> Yeah, he's he's still not like that bad, um, but a lot of his like, uwu baby boy stuff that he gets in the anime is not there in the manga. So like, when he's a dick, and it's kind of up to interpretation if he's being like a dick or like joking, 
it doesn't end with like him making a silly anime face as he gets like bonked or whatever. Uh, it's just him like making a really shitheaded comment, and you're like, man, <laughs> damn, that sucks. Mm. Yeah, he gets his characterization changed around a lot, but uh, yeah, no, I I love the the game here. I love the character work between Almina and Kisei, especially because they were always kind of the rivals back when they were in school. With Kisei being like, I need to, you know, I want to beat this guy, and they play one on one all the time, and they never do. And uh, I kind of like it a little bit too, where Almina's kind of like shitty mentality gets reinforced, where Kisei's like you know what, I'm going to be a team player instead and, and we're going to win. Because that's such a stereotypical moment where you're like, oh, he's going to he's gonna stop trying to do it all himself and that's going to be the thing that wins in the game. And then Almine stops it. And he's like, that's why you don't pass the ball, idiot. <laughs> as soon as you passed, it was over. Yeah, the, the way that he was saying, like, funny enough, I think it really is a case of, like, if he was maybe not copying Almine's style, it wouldn't have been that obvious. But because he's copying his style, he's like, nah... I would never do that. <laughs> that was maybe my favorite part where he's like, I would never do that. So I knew immediately what you were going to do. You broke. You were trying to be me, but it's literally so hard to be me. And it was true. Cause in that moment you see that he wants to pass to him. Cause that will be the thing that wins the ball wins the game. The difference is that in mentality is that Almine sees that situation. He sees his teammate going for the pass and he goes, fuck it. I'm going to win. <laughs> And I'm going to do it myself. It's a, yeah, it's a great reinforcement of his, like, shitty attitude that makes him feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm in the right here. <laughs> Your friends are useless. Look at him. Cost you the game, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's great. Also, the move he does where he stops the pass is really cool. Yes, it is. It is. Where he, like, uh, uh, like flips around in midair and slaps it out of his hand. It's yeah. pretty sick. I also like the part where they had to make sure to keep Malmina strong, and they say, like, I'm pretty sure he was holding back. The one, the, yep. the glasses dude, which they call the evil guy, and he goes like, is that how everyone sees me? Because he's always evil in every single shot that he's ever in. Yeah, he's always got like a awful looking face. He's like got a yeah. evil sneer on. Yeah. To the point where he's like, yeah, he's evil guy. He's like, is that really how everyone sees me? This is so cruel. <laughs> <laughs> so mean. It seems like he's genuinely hurt by it. But even he's, he's giving the comment as like, listen. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was holding back. There was like something. There was something in it. It was like, what was holding him back? He's like, probably the last shred of humanity that he had left. Yeah, and he, uh, not to spoil, but he is in fact holding back. There, There's more there. Yeah, I, I, I was convinced by it, for sure. My favorite part is also during this time when they're going back and forth like crazy and they're doing super well, is at one point they, Tepe asked them, he goes like, you guys beat these dudes? <laughs> how? How? Uh, that was maybe my favorite part where he's like man they're really going back and forth and they're doing so well I was like yeah they are so you guys won against them how <laughs> it really doesn't make sense it's like they just got way better since then I don't know what to tell you my guy but it is funny to think about that that was what I was thinking actually at the same time I was like I, well I remember that Kuriko was able to beat them so they shouldn't be that bad but it's like nah it's just not that level. He's, it's just on a completely different level. It's a good build-up for both of them. It's a good way to make both of them look strong while making... Even though Kuriko and Kagami have beaten them in the past, make it also look like, yeah, no, that's... You're not going to be enough if you're still at that level at that point. They've gone so much stronger since then. So, time to step up your game. And yeah, it's a fan. That's also a great game to end on season one as well, as we are now officially done with season one of Kuriko, and we will move on to season two. We will keep on going with the Kuriko, mainly because one, it is three seasons and a movie. I think it is actually three seasons and a movie. I'm pretty sure. Yep, but also at the same time, I'm super pumped to see more. I was super pumped to see more for uh, Yu-Gi-Oh GX as well. Yes. But the difference is that that the the those those the Yu-Gi-Oh GX seasons are like fifty at a time. Yeah, the Yu-Gi-Oh GX seasons are really long. I'm pretty sure season one and two of GX have more episodes total than all of Kuroko does. That is one hundred percent correct. They do. So we will keep on going. Not to say that we will not go back to GX because we plan it. We probably if the production issues are that bad for Jujutsu guys, then we might just break the seal and watch GX. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to not release episodes anymore. Yeah, we, we might have to break that seal and go back to it, but we'll see. 
uh, we will at least make sure to... We'll see how it looks like from two weeks from now. So anyway, let's get into the end. This is a fantastic... It's been a great first season. Um, I'm glad to have suggested to see this. And we should be able to... Oh man, We should be able to continue this on on the current pace that we got. So let me explain some things as we get to now the end bit of the show. Next week was typically not the time we will watch Koriko. But... There's a lot of things going on. First of all, next week is going to be Thanksgiving time. So the time that we would usually watch to watch um, Jujutsu Kaisen and talk about Gintama would be filled up. Not only that, we're not sure what's going on with Jujutsu Kaisen, as we mentioned at the beginning. The production issues, uh, we'll see. Um, We will have to make a decision by two weeks' time. If the anime has literally actually stalled out and is not ready to continue... I'm cool with continuing with Koriko two weeks from now, and then next week we'll see if they have fixed it by then, and if not, we might just start Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and wait for Jujutsu Kaisen to... We will at least release a video talking about, like, hey, we can talk about the one episode, because that one episode, it's really unfortunate, because that one episode has the one with the bunny action, and I really do want to talk about that, (laughs) but, uh... If there's a pause in the delay of it, then we will have to wait it out. If there's no pause in the delay of it, then um, two weeks from now will actually be Jujutsu Kaisen and uh, Gintama. And then a week after that, we will continue with Koriko. But we'll see. It's basically all up in the air now. It's up to the hands of the production staff of (laughs) Jujutsu Kaisen. (laughs) Again. Yeah. This is like so crazy. I don't know how to describe it. I know so crazy is a shitty descriptor, but seeing all this talk with people like animators just on Twitter being like, I will kill myself. Like, yeah, it did is. you see one of them? One of them literally posted a gif of a girl hanging herself. Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah, I... dude. They're like, they're not okay. No, apparently they are not okay. And understandable if their working traditions are shit, they should 100% be. So... Uh, I, I was reading a thread about it in between the Gintama and the Kuroko mm-hmm. episodes. Um, apparently, they made Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the whole movie, in four months. Fuck off. Are you serious? Yeah, four months. And then it's a, the the average development time for an animated movie, like, in the West. I have the West. Like, that sounds very Ben Shapiro. No. But, like, in the States, uh, in the West. is uh, two to three years. That is correct. I can tell you that right now. Yep. As someone, again... Not an actual animator in job, but someone who went to school for animation and had to work my ass off for 13 seconds of an animation for a pro- end project. I can tell you right now, doing how doing 2D animation, how well did they do it over there? And for the fucking for an entire fucking movie, that's insane. Four months. The oh yep, my god, the entire dude. thing in four months. That's fucking insane. Like, it, like, you're right, it is shitty to say that's crazy to describe the situation, but that is actually legitimately crazy. How fucking hard were they working these people? Because that is not sustainable. You are losing people. You, that is borderline, like, the fucking dude at Ghibli who died on his desk. Like, that is the rate of work in which you are pushing these people. That's the reason Miyazaki had to, the first time he retired, that we retired, is because his mentor fucking died animating. And he's like, That's I can't. So crazy. Yeah, he he died like literally on the table, died like in production of a movie. He just fucking died, and he was like, I have to step back. And then he ended up coming back because he loves animation, but it's still not right to be treating people this way. Yeah, and apparently they're like, um, it's impossible to get an extension because like the the directors there. Or not directors, but like whoever whoever the corporate people are there, and Shueisha both have to approve it, and they're like, it's literally impossible. That will never happen. Like zero percent chance you get approval from both sides to to extend, and so they're just like, well, I guess I'll just, just die. No, I mean, if, if and then literally... one of them tweeted uh, like, finish. We're gonna finish the episode and then leave our key cards on our desks, like, not mm. coming back to the studio. No, it's no. crazy, man. Yeah, that that is one hundred percent crazy. And we'll see how it comes up. If it if there's a, we might have to actually just do an entire episode talking about the situation. If things how fucked not. it all is, yeah. Honestly, we should. We'll we'll save it for. We'll see how things kind of plan out. But if things do not go 
if it not if does not look like it's improving, we should at least take the time out and say like, hey man, this shit's paused, and we're not gonna complain about it because these people are pausing because they need to fucking live. And I care more about these people <laughs> than as much as I love Jujutsu Kaisen, I would much care, I care way more that the people who are actually animating it behind get the rest Aren't, they need. Uh, suffering? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how I feel about the, the manga itself. Like, when they, when he go, when uh, Geisha goes on breaks, I'm like, great. He should. Because the, the rate of work is not sustainable. There's a reason why comics only release, like, once a month over here. Because it's not, it's not easy work. This is the reason why we have fucking the man behind Yu Yu Hakusho borderline on his deathbed on his back trying to draw a single thing. Because he's overworked himself and there's no fixing him. And it's just sad. Like, I don't want anyone to get to that level. It's, yeah. Man, we'll see. But in terms of Kuriko, we'll also see. But for next week, for sure, we're not recording anything. <laughs> If no. if there's a, if the Jujutsu Kaisen situation is so bad, we'll find a way to maybe talk about it on Tuesday or Monday when we go to stream. That's about it. But for the most part, we'll be out for Thanksgiving, and you should do the same unless you are hanging out by yourself. In which case, do I don't know, go to a Ch no no that's what um, Jewish people do on Christmas. They go to a Chinese place <laughs> to, to eat Chinese oh, yeah. food. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what you do if you're someone who has no family on Thanksgiving and or you're an indigenous person who refuses to accept Thanksgiving. You're one of those. Find out what you need to do and hang out. <laughs> do do your thing. But yeah, we will be back uh, when we'll need to be back. And now it's time to actually legitimately end the show. As always, if you want to follow Zen. You can go over to Zen's channel where he does Shonen and Chill, where he chills out and talks about the current ongoing manga that he's been reading, where he talks about um, Kagero Bachi. Is that is his name? It's now actually that's a real. One of them. Yeah, that's one of them. It's now an actual series. It's no longer a meme, so I have to actually remember its name. <laughs> yeah, Kagero Bachi. You should read it, man. It's only like nine chapters long. It's pretty banger so far. Maybe I will. I keep saying maybe yeah, I will, but one one of these days we're gonna go. We're gonna do one of these end episode bit and say, "I've actually been reading Kagurabachi," and that will be the reveal <laughs> that I've actually been. Uh, I've been reading it since the last time, but it hasn't happened yet. We'll see. I'm really bad when it comes to uh, reading manga. I hold off on a lot of it and wait. The only ones I don't wait for are Jujutsu Kaisen because it's immediately spoiled like fucking five days before it actually releases and chainsaw man because it actually because it's digital it releases on tuesday and it's the minute i wake up on a tuesday um it's all over my feed so <laughs> i have to read chainsaw man immediately the others i can wait a bit like not not a lot of people talking about sakamoto days no one's talking about uh in my circles i should say because i'm gonna get shit for this uh, no one's talking about my hero <laughs> yeah i mean but that's because they've be they've anyway. been it's like that tweet i did a long time ago where i said like oh shit man what, where the fuck oh man i wish i could find it i i made i made fun of how long it's taking for this arc specifically to end <laughs> uh let me see if i can find it real quick if i just step in my hero i remember it it was when i was looking oh man i remembered it now i'm, I'm remembering uh, I found a My Hero Monopoly when I was hanging out at the mall. <laughs> and I said in my tweet, in the My Hero Monopoly, when it looks like the game is ending, you transition to another Monopoly game in progress. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fucking funny, actually. Yeah, let me see oh, if I can, I can find the tweet. Oh, I can, really I can, good. Yeah, that is... That is uh... You follow me on Twitter, because I occasionally have... <laughs> A good tweet. Uh, that's the one. And I remember even a friend of mine who was a big fan of uh, My Hero was like, damn. <laughs> You're right. Because I am yeah. a big fan of My Hero. But that's currently what this final arc is. It's a lot of like... Well, it's crazy because like... Um... Hang on, I'm loading up the tweet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um... Well, it's crazy because we're in the final fucking... This is the end. This is the end of the series that we're in right now. Yep. And literally all Deku and Shigaraki have done is, like, have some panels looking at one another. Yes. That's it. It's been going on for, like, a year and a half. It they has. They haven't done anything. 
What are they doing? You're at least when they came with uh, Kaido and Luffy, they were punching each other. <laughs> yeah, it, whenever you cut to like Kaido and Luffy, they were hitting one another. These dudes are just like grappling. It's like uh, remember um, '90s Spider-Man and how he had that rule that he was not allowed to punch people. Uh huh. That's literally what it feels like. Yeah. Because it keeps like they'll fight all for one for like seven years, and then. They'll cut over to uh, Deku and Shigaraki, and they're just, like, glaring menacingly, gripping each other's wrists. They're kind of fighting that same fight that Mewtwo and Mew had in the Pokemon movie, where they're just kind of floating <laughs> next to each other, shooting energy balls, except for it. There's no energy ball, and there's no ash in the middle, unless you want to count Bakugo as their... No, actually, there is an ash in the middle. It's all might. Yeah, their, their Pikachu, their, their, their Pikachu is Bakugo. He's the one out here crying tears, hitting him with electric shocks to make sure that he's okay. Yeah, it's a, it's been a hell of a, it's been a hell of a fun arc. I'll say that much. Of um, one of these days, it, it will end. I think until then. Yeah, but a lot of the ones that I typically read, and no one posts about, so I'm usually pretty good to like wait a wait a wait a while, and then read it. Um. Yeah, you can follow Zen, watch his show. If you want more me, follow me. There'll be more me stuff. We stream on Mondays now, so you can go to the Twitch channel. Um, I should do a better job at remembering. Now that we actually do it on Mondays and we've kept it fairly confident, I should now say, hey, streams are back. <laughs> you can you can go here, check it out. But anyway, that's the end of Shonen Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Me and Zen have been recording for a very long time, and it's time for yes, us to finally we rest. Have been. <laughs> and sleep <laughs> well i'm going to go to work but zen can finally end his day he can have his uh, end of watch time for me to to heal yeah i have to get up and do a training at 10 30 in the morning baby put him in the hyperbol put him in that fucking weird uh, not the hyperbolic time chamber because that would be terrible put him in uh, that the weird rejuvenation tank thing yeah we'll put you in the reju re re rejuvenation tank and i'll open it up on monday and we'll see <laughs> how everything will be rejuvenated. We'll need to be if we're going to finish all of Pokemon TCG in a single setting <laughs> for, from where we are at. But anyway. We can do it, man. We can do it. I believe in us. I'll have water I and believe. food available. All right, everyone. Peace out. We'll see you guys two weeks from now. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> I... I <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hit the end record for the OBS, I hit the leave call button! <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh, goodbye, everybody! <laughs>